and turn me around how we place my feet on solid ground hallelujah jesus when i think about the lord how he saved me how he raised me how he filled me with the holy ghost how he healed me to the uttermost when i think about the lord how he picked me up and turned me around how he placed my feet on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise hallelujah jesus when i think about the lord how he saved me how he raised me how he filled me with the holy ghost how he healed me to the uttermost when i think about the lord how he picked me up and turned me around how he placed my feet hallelujah jesus on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise hallelujah it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus the lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah jesus he's so worthy hallelujah jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory hallelujah all of the honor and all of the praise hallelujah jesus when i think about the lord how he saved me how he raised me how he filled me with the holy ghost how he healed me to the uttermost when i think about the lord how he picked me up and turned me around how he placed my feet on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah jesus he's so worthy we serve a mighty god hallelujah hallelujah jesus hallelujah jesus god hallelujah jesus you're so worthy god hallelujah
nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, the King. What a powerful name. Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's so worthy, isn't he? We serve a mighty God. We serve an all-powerful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's just praise him tonight. Let's give him the highest praise. We serve a mighty God, a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Jesus and what he's done for me. 
When I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I will clap, 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 clap all night, all night. When I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I will shout, 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 shout all night, all night. Hallelujah. When I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I will dance, dance. shout. We've got a reason to praise God. Why don't we just do that right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. You've been so good to us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I still like all these young people up here, the way they worship God. Isn't it wonderful? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, you can be seated for a little bit. We are, we're in a time when we need to raise some money for new furnaces. And uh, thank God, I, I believe everybody gave so well for the parking lot. Uh, but we've got furnaces that are almost 30 years old. And uh, they are slowly dying. And we've had uh, a couple of them die. And we have also, I believe, a need to actually put more heat in the foyer and into the restrooms. And uh, Brother Roberts has kind of put together that program. And what we're uh, going to do is I'm going to have him come and just explain, you know, about the heating situation and uh, the fact, the reason why we need, we actually need three furnaces. And there's a reason why we need three furnaces. Praise God. Brother Robert. Thank you, Brother Stevens. Um, it's actually four. We have three furnaces over here um, in the closet of Sister, the, the room where Sister Elena's Sunday school class is. All three of those furnaces, the, um, what do they call it, the plenum or something, you know, is cracked or whatever. And so those just have to be replaced. And they're, I understand, someone said they're 31 years old. I imagine they were put in in 1984. So you can do the math. Um, so these furnaces have served us well. <clears throat> and uh, it's just at a point where it's not safe to operate them. And so we have to replace them. Um, even before we knew about that, we had been talking with Total Comfort about um, doing something to add more heat to our lobby for the winter time. How many of you ladies are tired of sitting in the winter time and having the cold air come down underneath the pews and just freeze you? A few of you like that? Yeah, well, maybe not too many, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, so we've been talking to them <coughs> about actually suspending a furnace from the ra the metal roofing rafters above the ceiling in the lobby so you won't even see it but then there'll be ducts that bring heat down right by the outside doors there 
and along the outside wall, and then there'll be cold air returns back this way. S and also there will be ducts that go into each of the front bathrooms out here. So hopefully we won't have to have those um, electrical heaters that we've been using in the bathrooms in the front. So we just want to have, have it warm when our guests come in and warm for us when we come in uh, in the wintertime. Praise the Lord. Did I have a question? Okay. Adding some humidifiers, you're saying? Yeah, I don't know whether these furnaces have any humidifiers on them. Yeah. Well, have we been having those problems? I don't know. I mean, because nothing, we're not doing anything different than what we've had before with regard to our heat. But um, I take that comment as something to think about. I, I Well, thank you for the comment. Yeah, I, I don't know if uh, there's an efficient way to do some humidifying in the winter or not. But uh, that might be something to think about. Um, so, <clears throat> with regard to, that's really all I have to say, is there are three new furnaces going in here. There's um, a, a new furnace going, three older ones going to be replaced over here, and one added with new capacity to make our front entrance warm and welcoming for our visitors and for us too. I'm tired of coming in in the wintertime Having the first thing I do when I walk in in the wintertime is look for those electric heaters on both sides and make sure they're on because it's cold, just plain cold. So uh, that hopefully will be all resolved. And that particular project, those three furnaces and that new one being added is $16,000. So that's um, a, you know, not too much for us, but it's something we need to uh, address and get done. Is there anything else you want me to talk about? Okay, go ahead. And thank uh, Brother Roberts for working on this. And uh, we are going to receive an offering or pledges on the 21st. Okay, so that's... Uh, Two weeks uh, from now, uh, we'll be taking an offering, uh, pledges, and we'd like you to think about what the Lord might want you to give and what we want uh, you to pledge. Uh, this church has been very generous, I believe, and, uh, and I think that uh, the Lord blesses uh, his people being generous, and uh, I think we need to pray about this as well. Praise God. Okay, so next week I won't be here, but the week after I will be, and we'll be taking that offering uh, that week that we're here. Let's all stand together and let's pray uh, for this uh, message and service tonight. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your blessings in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you're here tonight. Lord, you're here to help everyone that's here. You've come because we need you, and we love you, and you love us, Lord. Let your perfect will be done tonight in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to go right uh, and read a couple of scriptures. First, uh, Philippians 4 and verse number 19. And then we'll go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. Paul said, you Philippians, you have been very 
Uh, bless you've really blessed the church the way you have behaved yourself and you have given and then he said but my God shall supply all your needs because you have given my God is going to supply all your needs and uh, you know we don't give to have God supply our needs but he still watches you know think about Jesus standing and watching the people give an offering and he was watching what they were giving. And one lady gave two mites. And uh, he said it was more than the rest. Uh, he uh, likes to find his people cheerfully giving to him. And then Colossians 2 and verse 10. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. You are complete in Jesus Christ. In other words, whatever you need is in Jesus Christ. Whatever you need. Amen. You may have problems in your life, but Jesus Christ can help take care of those problems. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, how many here have ever prayed for money? Amen. Well, I have. And uh, the Lord answered my prayer. Amen. Because I'm complete in him. He, he'll make up the difference. When I don't have it, he can make up the difference. Praise God. Amen. The Lord wants us to live a life doing the things that are important in life. Not wasting our time on things that are not important. And uh, there are are some very important things that he is trying to teach us to do. In Luke chapter 10, verse 40 to 42, we have him talking to Mary and Martha. And uh, the Bible said that Martha was cumbered about with uh, much serving. She was very taken up by serving Jesus. Uh, of course, having Jesus in her house Probably really made her feel pretty proud, but but yet uh, she got so focused on the giving that uh, on really on Jesus being there that she did not uh, was not able to just be calm and listen to Jesus, and um, so she got upset and she said, "Jesus, don't you know that my sisters left me alone to serve?" Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Well, she was so focused on that that she could not even listen to what Jesus had to say. Okay, let's go to the next verse. Then, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. Next verse. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Mary has chosen to focus on listening to me. That's the important thing. And that's the important thing today, that we listen to Jesus. Amen. We can get so cumbered about with so many things going on in life that we don't even have time to listen to Jesus, and we don't have time to pray to hear from Jesus, and we don't have time, amen, to do the work of Jesus Christ. John Wolfram, I believe he's been here before. He was the uh, one of the fellows that recovered, uh, I think it was uh, the 11, Apollo 11, as it splashed into the ocean. And um, he, uh, but when he came back to the States, uh, he knew that he needed God. And he went searching for God. And he tried to find somebody that could show him about God. And he found a pamphlet which told him about a Pentecostal meeting they had. And he found it in the trash barrel someplace. And he said, I'm going to go to this. And boy, when he went, the Lord really touched him. But then he had other friends that were saying, 
No, you don't need the Holy Ghost. You, you don't need that. You don't. You just. You already came to God. You don't need the Holy Ghost. And so he heard that day in and day out. And so what he decided to do was to go on a four-day fast. I'll tell you, God will speak to you if you go on a four-day fast. Amen. Amen. He was listening for the voice of the Lord. And, in fact, during that four-day fast, he got the Holy Ghost, and he knew that he needed the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. But he had to get in a place where he could listen to God. He needed to hear from God. Amen. So uh, let's go to Matthew uh, chapter 11, 28 through 30. Here, Jesus makes an invitation. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. He said, if you're really tired, you need to take my yoke upon you because it's lighter than yours. You know, we tend to pick up burdens ourselves. And, uh, oh, I think I'd like to uh, build me something kind of big here and looks nice. And we get involved in that project. And then something else takes our mind and we get involved in this project, and after a while, we got too many burdens. How many have ever been there before? You just got too many burdens. You just can't, you can't hardly bear all the things that you're trying to do. But Jesus said, I'll give you, I'll, you can make a trade. Amen. I'll take your burdens if you'll take my burdens. Amen. And he said, I'll guarantee you my burdens lighter than yours. Amen. It'll be a lighter thing to carry than what you are carrying. Praise God. The Lord wants us to be involved in his work. Amen. You know, it's so easy in this busy society just to kind of exclude yourself and not be a part of his work. But the Lord didn't save us just to, to sit and be a bystander. He saved us to be a participator. And he has a ministry for you and for me. And I need to find what that ministry really is. Amen. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Amen. You have tried so many things, but if you'll just take my yoke upon you, you can learn of me. Amen. What kind of car would you like to have uh, next year? This is a question that Mike McDermott would ask guys that worked on the line. And they'd say, well, I think I'll buy, and we'd give them the name of a car. And uh, he said, Bob, how long will it take you to pay for that? And they said, well, probably around a year. You know, I have to take all my wages and pay for that car. It'd take me about a year's time. And he said, have you ever read the Bible through? Oh, no, I, I haven't read the Bible through. You'd spend a year of your life spending it for on a car, but you've never studied the Bible. That's right, never studied the Bible. And the Bible is going to affect your eternal destiny. Amen. You need to read the Bible. You need to study the Bible. Amen. Even we can become so caught up with things that are happening that we don't read the Bible. Amen. We don't pray. We don't do the things we ought to do. But we ought to realize that he wants us to do those things. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. A lot of people say what you don't know won't hurt you. But the Lord says what you don't know will destroy you. What you don't know will destroy you. You need to learn about me. You need more information. Amen. You know, think about Jesus teaching his disciples for three and a half years, teaching them what they needed to know about how to be saved, but also how to live. Now, is that important, to know how to live and how to be saved? I'd say absolutely. We, uh, 
you know, that should come first before anything else. We need to read what the apostles said. And that's basically in the book of Acts, how to be saved, and the rest of the books the apostles wrote about how to live for God. If there's anything we need to know, we need to know what the apostles said because they were taught directly by Jesus. You want to follow Jesus? You need to read what the apostles wrote because they got it directly from Jesus Christ. You know, one day uh, Jesus was approached by, I believe, some Pharisees, and, and uh, they gave him a, a kind of an idea. They said, well, you know, there's one lady, she, uh, her husband died, and, and the Jewish uh, way of doing things is that the next in line, the next brother would become the next husband. So they said, well, the one husband died, and then the next husband died, and then the next husband died, and all together there were seven husbands that died. Which husband will she have in the resurrection? Okay? You know, Jesus looked at them, and I, I can just see him shaking his head. Amen. You err, not knowing the scriptures or the power of God. You err because you don't know the Bible. I'll tell you, all of us err when we don't know the Bible well enough. Amen. He said, you're making mistakes. You just don't even know the Bible or the, or the power of God. Amen. Amen. Years ago, I received a call from a man that used to be in Life Christian Church. And uh, nobody here knows him. Uh, but he had stage four cancer. And uh, he had a business that was growing quite well. And he had children that were growing up. But he was very, really reevaluating his life. And he was very remorseful because he said, I've got my kids so involved in sports that they're not even able to go to church. They don't know anything about God. Amen. I'll tell you what, sometimes church... Amen. And the sports don't mix. Amen. I'll tell you, the church should come first. Do you agree? Church should come first. Amen. But he said, my kids don't know anything about how to serve God. And then he said he was really sad himself because he had, uh, he had watched a lot of television. He had wasted his life and he made a lot of mistakes. Amen. When you're absent from the church, after a while, you even forget the things you once knew. And that's, I think, where he was. And uh, last I heard about him, he was planning to go to church. But I don't believe he ever made it back in uh, before he died. You see, our habits are going to determine our destiny, probably. In other words, Whatever habits I have right now, I'm not going to just change the day that Jesus Christ comes back. I'm just going to keep living my habits. And that's, I think, what he did. His habit was not to go to church. His habit was to do all these other things, and so he just kept his habits. Amen. But I'll tell you, we need good habits. You know, the Bible said that Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day as was his custom. He always went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. It was like us going to church on Sunday. Amen. He didn't miss a day. He just went to the synagogue. Amen. That habit of coming to church could be the thing that saves you. Just the fact that you come to church and you hear the word of God and you're with other people that are trying to serve God could be the thing that would save us. Amen. I want to find out what habits he wants me to have to serve him. Amen. So necessary things that we only find in Jesus Christ. What are some of them? You know, I, I read about King David and all, all the battles he had. So I decided to kind of make a count of how many battles that I could count throughout the Bible, throughout the book of Psalms and other places, how many battles he really went through. And according to my short study, 
I figured out it was about 50, about 50 battles. Here's a man that went to battle a lot. And we don't see him, I don't see him ever even being wounded. God was protecting him. God his hand on him, on his life. Amen. That's one thing God can do for you. He can protect you. How many here have been protected by God at some time or another? You've been protected. Praise God. Amen. David began to talk about the protection of the Lord. And he said in Psalms 18 and verse 2, the Lord is my rock. What do you mean rock? I mean, he is stability. He is the thing I can always count on. He never changes. He's always the same. Amen. You can't say that of any other person hardly, but you can say it about Jesus Christ. He never, never changes. And it goes on to say, he is my fortress. Fortress, a place of exceptional security. I'm secure in him. And he went on to say that um, uh, he is my deliverer, which means my rescuer. He saves me just in time. Amen. How many have been saved a lot of times? Amen. Amen. You don't just get saved once, but the Lord saves you. He's going to save you probably a lot of times. Praise God. Amen. Then he said, he's my God. Well, he's God. But is he your God? In other words, if he's your God, then you obey him. If he's your God, then you want to find out what he wants you to do. And then do that as well. He's my God, he said. And then he said he's my strength. Amen. Amen. In other words, I have, uh, I can withstand great pressure because I'm strong. The devil's going to put on the pressure at times. But I'm strong. Thank God I'm strong. Amen. Because he makes me strong. Then he said he's my buckler. What's a buckler? It's a shield. It's a shield. He said, in other words, somehow he blocks the things that are coming against me. Somehow he's there to protect me when other things seem to be wanting to destroy me. He's there. How many have seen him at work protecting you at some time or another? Amen. Then he went on to say, he's my high tower. What's a high tower? Well, in those days, they never knew when an enemy was coming against them. But they had to climb this high tower and then look out and see if there's any enemies out there. But David said, no, God's my high tower. He warns me when something bad's going to happen. Amen. He warns you need to take the warning of God. If God warns you about something, you need to believe it and understand it. Amen. He said, well, he's my high tower. Amen. And then he says, he's the horn of my salvation. He's the strength of my salvation. And he protects me in battle. Not only is he a protector, but he's also our purpose, our purpose. Isaiah 12 and verse 2, this is a verse that I have enjoyed and loved over the years. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He's also become my salvation. That last word for salvation, you know what that is? Jesus. Amen. You know, uh, Brother Urshan talked about uh, talking to a, a Jewish priest. And he said, would you interpret that verse for me in the Hebrew? And the, the guy said, uh, no, I don't want to. He said, you go tell my people. And he said, no, I won't tell your people. Just tell me what that says. And, of course, he had to say, the Lord, he's also become my Jesus. Amen. He was just the Lord Jehovah. But now he is going to become my Jesus. He gives me a purpose in life, not only to have the strength to do it, but also to have a purpose, a song. In other words, what's a song? A song is something that gives you joy. A song is something that gives you purpose. Amen. 
and uh, you have strength from God, but you also have a purpose in life, a song uh, that you can sing to God because of his love for you. Amen. And uh, so he is my purpose. What a tragedy to get to the end of life and say, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know why I'm alive. I don't know why I was ever born. And I don't know uh, what I'm alive for. That's a terrible thing to know, to, to feel that way. I, I just don't feel like I have a purpose for living. You have a purpose. You need to find it. In the end, you need to find out what your purpose is. Oh, yeah, I know serving God. That is the number one purpose. I agree with that. Serving God. But also you have a ministry. You have something God wants you to do. Amen. Uh, someone said that life is like a storybook. It has a plot, a plan, and a purpose. Amen. Your life has a plan from God and a purpose. Some people would say, no, my life doesn't have any uh, thing like that. I, it has no rhyme or reason. I have no direction. I have no purpose. Amen. They live a life just kind of like the wind, being blown one way, blown the other way, blown this way and that, because they don't have a purpose. Amen. Very frustrating to not have a purpose. I think it was Plato that said life is like being bound in a cave facing the wall. And all you can see are just the shadows against the wall. He's saying you have no idea what's happening. You just see shadows. And I'll tell you, if you're not saved, I believe that's probably true. You can't see any purpose to it. But thank God that we can see what's happening. God can show us what is happening in life. Praise God. Amen. Do you have a spiritual challenge in your life? Do you have a purpose that you're working at for God? Is there something that you're trying to do for the Lord? There was a psychologist by the name of William Moulton Marston, and he asked 3,000 people, what do you have to do uh, for live for in life? What do you have to live for in life? 3,000 people. 94% said, well, I'm just kind of enduring the present. Uh, I'm waiting for my kids to grow up. Or I'm waiting for a certain vacation to come up. Or I'm waiting to, uh, to get divorced. Or I'm waiting to get married. I'm waiting. Amen. And they said they're just waiting, waiting. But tomorrow never comes. Today is the day of salvation. We can't wait around. Amen. We've got to do something for God. We need to be doers and not just waiters. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Jesus, the Bible said he saw the multitudes and he was moved with compassion because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. That's the way Jesus saw people in crowds. He saw them as lost, directionless. Sheep that are hurting, fainting, scattered, having no shepherd. Do you have a shepherd? You know, he is the shepherd and we are the sheep. Our shepherd should lead us and guide us in our life. Our shepherd should protect us and provide for us. But you know what? He can't do those things unless... He really is our shepherd. Amen. Does he tell us what to do? Does he tell us sometimes what not to do? The Bible said, grieve not the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many know what that is? Grieving the Holy Ghost said, don't do that. Amen. You know where that comes from? Your shepherd. He's looking out for you. He said, don't do that. Amen. Stay away from that. David said it this way. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. 
He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. My shepherd leads me. Amen. David said, my shepherd leads me in the paths of righteousness. Amen. But he can't lead us if we don't listen to him. He can't lead us if we don't know his voice. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and another they will not follow. Amen. He wants to be our shepherd, but we have to agree and let him be our shepherd. Amen. You know, even a pastor cannot shepherd a church if the people aren't willing to let him be a shepherd. Amen. The people have to say, yes, I have a shepherd as far as a, a human pastor, and I am going to let him lead me along the path of life. Amen. But you have a shepherd, and we need to really listen for the voice of our shepherd. Amen. If we don't find our purpose in life, we're wasting our life. I believe that maybe the Lord will be speaking to somebody tonight to say, I want to talk about your purpose in life. I want to talk to you about your purpose because you've got a purpose, you know. You've got a purpose. You need to find your purpose. And I want to talk to you about that tonight. Praise God. I've often told this story about Brian Wiseman. It really made an effect upon me, his life. He was a wild, wild young man. He did crazy things like jumping off buildings, chewing glass. He shook his face at God, the fist at God, and said, kill me. If there's really a God, kill me. And, of course, he said, see, he didn't kill me. Amen. He challenged God. Amen. I, I, I knew Brian, and my Aunt Phyllis knew Brian, I, I believe he he went to the Eastside Apostolic Tabernacle at that time, the church that I pastor now, and uh, he would bring people into the church. You see, Brian changed. Something drastic happened to Brian because he found his purpose. He found his purpose. Amen. Brian was uh, from Wisconsin. He said he was walking down the street in Madison, Wisconsin, when he heard God speak to him and say, Brian, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? And Brian answered, I don't know. The voice said, what about being a preacher? He said, sure, why not? Then God talked to him about being a missionary, a missionary to Brazil. And that's really how he came to Lansing. He said, I'm going to get on a train, and I'm going to go to Brazil. I'm going to, he figured out, and, uh, but he decided to stop in Lansing for a while. In a few months, he was there. He was always bringing people to church. I mean, bringing quite a few people to church. And, uh, but then he told us he needed to go back home first before he went to Brazil. He went back to Wisconsin. And there in Wisconsin, he met a lady who, as a young girl, stood up in church. And I believe, I'm sure she was an apostolic Pentecostal. And announced that God had called her to be a missionary to Brazil. When she was a little girl, Brian met her. They got married. They went to Brazil and did a great work for God. Amen. Brian found his purpose. His purpose was not jumping off buildings. His purpose was not chewing glass. But think about the drastic change that happened to Brian when he found his purpose. What a drastic change. God somehow talked to him about his purpose, and he was willing to listen. And when he found his purpose, he became a missionary, a great missionary. He did a lot for God. You know, that could happen to somebody here. You know, when if you could find your purpose, you don't know what you could do for God. Amen. 
let God lead you and guide you into your purpose and be used of him in your purpose. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen to the shepherd. The Israelites were led by God to the promised land, the land that God had promised to give them. God led them all the way to that promised land. He helped them through a lot of things, uh, took care of their enemies, and bitter waters were turned sweet, and so on. And they got to the promised land. And then somebody came out uh, that had spied the promised land and said, we saw giants over there in that land. And they say that uh, Goliath was one of those Anakins. They were extremely large. And they had real long necks, and they were extremely ugly. And it made everybody scared to death of them. They say that they're, they were so unusual, they had their bones displayed even at the time of Christ because of the unusual. They had real long necks. And so when people looked at them, they were so afraid. And uh, so that's what happened. They got all the way to the promised land, and they said... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm afraid. I, I'm not going to go in there. Those giants over there, they'll just eat us all alive. We'll be all dead. And uh, I'm, I'm afraid to do it. I'm afraid. How many times does a devil try to stop you from doing God's will by saying, you need to be afraid. You need to fear. You need to be afraid. Amen. You know, the devil uses fear, but God uses faith. Amen. God wants us to believe in him. He wants us to have faith in him. Praise God. And uh, so they just said, no, no, we're not going to do this. And uh, they wandered around to the wilderness. And so they just went round and round in the wilderness for 40 years, wasting their life. Round and round, no purpose. Just getting older and dying. That was what their life was all about now. They lost everything. They didn't have a plan. They didn't have a purpose. They didn't have God leading them. He didn't have a shepherd leading them. They just were afraid. We're going to live in this wilderness. And they did. They died in that wilderness. Forty years. God took the rest of them. God said, now, Joshua, I want you to become the leader now of the Israelites, and I want you to lead them into the promised land. Well, Joshua, he was a man that had the same values as Moses did. He had the same desires as Moses did. But those people had seen what had happened to their parents, and they knew that they didn't want to end up that way. They said, they said, he said, if somebody tries to disobey you, they said, you know what, we'll, we'll kill them, okay? They were serious. They didn't want to end up with a life like that. They would rather die trying to do God's will than to, than to go back to the wilderness like their parents did. Year after year after year. And they did. They went into the promised land, and they won every battle they fought. Amen. Everywhere they went, they overcame. Uh, they, except for one with AI, but they overcame that eventually too. Amen. But God let them into the purpose, and they had the promised land. Let's all stand together. Let's raise our hands together to the Lord. Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that God's made some promises to me. And I want to have those promises fulfilled. I want to go into my promised land. And I believe that God's made some promises to you. 
And if you'll keep going, you can go into your promised land. But I'm not going to stop, and I'm not going to linger. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to give it all I've got. I'm going to serve God with all my heart, and I want to see what he can do in my life. Amen. You have a promised land ahead of you if you will listen to the voice of God. Praise God. Every head is bowed and eyes closed. Amen. Would someone just raise your hand and say, Brother Stevens, I feel like the Lord spoke to me. There's several hands. Thank the Lord. Let's all raise our hands to the Lord. Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, God, I want your will in my life. I want you to be the shepherd of my life. I want you to say no when you don't want it and say yes when you do want it. And I'll do whatever you say, God. Amen. I will follow you. I've got a purpose. And I want to lead other people to their purpose. Praise God. Let's worship the Lord some more. Oh, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Let's, if you feel the Lord, would you just come and pray for a while before you leave here? Amen. Get a touch from God. Get another touch from God. Amen. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Going Thank you, Lord. Back, I'm oh, moving hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. I'm here to declare to you my past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving.